Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Sorsha and today on Free Flow we're going to explore the luteal phase. Dun dun dun! This is where I'd like to shake the camera. Um, if I could edit that in but anyway <laughs> I am um, I've had a love-hate relationship with the luteal phase for quite some time and I think it gets uh, I think it gets a bad rap I think of all the phases in the cycle luteal phase definitely gets a bad rap so we're going to kind of um, have a little um, look at various things various factors for luteal phase aka in autumn and yeah we're just going to kind of debunk some stuff have a little a little mini dive and um this is kind of nice, some nice groundwork really for next month. So April is, um, actually this video might be coming out. No, I think, it, yeah, I think I've timed that right. So yeah, so um, April is uh, PMDD awareness month and um, I've got quite a lot of content really kind of centered around PMDD and PMDD happens um, really mostly within the um, well yeah within the luteal phase of the cycle so if you don't know what PMDD is if you don't know what PME is you probably know what PMS is but if you don't know about those other bits then just keep your eyes peeled for next month's content um, because I think it's going to really really help and really really serve and uh, I also just didn't know about these things um, you know for the longest time and I really wish that I had because my mental health would have just not been in the gutter for a really long time. I'm going to take my glasses off because I feel like they're giving me weird shadows. It's that time of day when we're getting the weird shadows in my room. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I yeah wanted to do a little yeah a little ditty over on the uh, on the luteal phase. So I'm a little bit spacey right now. I think because I'm trying to drink more water. Um, mm, I already filmed the ovulatory phase video earlier today and I just kept like spacing out towards the end and I've just had a good lunch so I'm hoping I can focus because I'm not really sure why I'm feeling like oh although I haven't meditated today so that may have been a, a schoolboy error but hmm also have my new top this top is also from vintage feeling very boobyish today <laughs> maybe it's because I'm ovulating um but yeah so let's get into it aka in autumn so as obviously this whole little mini series has been about um you know the the, the wheel of the year slash um well really more specifically the seasons of the year and how the um how red school um who wrote the book wild power big shout out to them as always um they kind of gave us this language to discuss the menstrual cycle which i think is really cool because i feel like we can kind of all relate to it on a seasonal level and um I also want to say that there are there are other inner seasons. We kind of break it up into four four seasons. I do have um, some other season videos planned, but I kind of just wanted to go in with the four seasons because otherwise, you know, I'm I'm kind of treating these videos as if you've never really heard of menstrual sinking or menstrual cy menstrual cycling menstrual cycle awareness, body literacy, things like that. And then also, obviously, if you have heard of these things, then great, because I'm sure there'll be some new things to learn. You can share some things with me because I'm always learning new things. And yeah, I just didn't want it to be too, um, you know, I kind of I think, you know, we have to we have to kind of spoon feed it so that we're not kind of like overwhelmed because that can easily happen. <laughs> or at least it can for me with ADHD, because I'm like, I want to learn everything now. Um, so yeah, so um, in autumn um, is the season for luteal phase. And again, I've got the hiccups now, sorry, I just ate my, <laughs> my lunch. Um, and again, if you're using the moon to cycle, to, to, as like an anchor for your cycle practice, then this will be the waning moon. Um, do check out my uh, moon video. <laughs> somewhere in here I'll do the little card thing do check out my moon video where you can find out how to if you don't have um, a bleed for whatever reason you can cycle sync with the moon um, and uh, yeah but if you're using that then it'll be the waning moon I think a really easy way to remember this is that your um, the new moon is like when the moon is at its kind of you know darkest really and um, 
and there is just that kind of element of like this the sky is really really dark and um i was like the sky is dark and so is your soul no the sky is dark and menstrual phase is like you kind of just want to have like the lights out you know the, the soft lights kind of taking it slow wintry vibe you know so you can kind of remember it that way the um full moon is ovulatory phase so when your energy is like at its peak just like the big grat around beautiful bright moon your mood is probably a bit brighter and more uh, awake etc etc so you can use that and then also waning waning moon energy weight energy is waning so like uh, luteal phase energy definitely wanes and then follicular phase waxing moon so the energy is um yeah like wax on wax up it's getting it's, go it's going up <laughs> it's going up I feel like I feel like I've lost the ability to speak words this afternoon so I'm really sorry I hope that this is just I'm gonna just keep I'm just gonna keep going because I feel like you know this is just life isn't it this is a bit chaotic and a bit all over this also it just started raining and now it stops so I think my energy my my brain is just a bit like it's the rain <laughs> what's going on anyway so <laughs> waning moon waning like your energy is waning basically that's 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 the whole point i'm trying to make um and i think also uh this would be a good time for me to pop in the little slide about hormones so in this part of the cycle the um testosterone is kind of coming back back down again the um estrogen is starting to decrease as well and the progesterone is um kind of coming to like a bit of a yeah it's kind of coming to its peak here um and then it will start to go down again um for menstrual phase where all of those three hormones are kind of at their lowest point so yeah so the so, so the progesterone is rising and then um yeah coming to a peak so if you have pmdd there can be a really beautiful sweet relief that comes with your bleed because for most people then to those symptoms of pmdd tend to start to dissipate if not on the first day of bleed, kind of by by day three. Um, so I think that's just worth 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 being aware of. Obviously, I'll bring this up in in the PMDD video, but just keeping that in mind. So the progesterone is rising now. Progesterone. Every time I say progesterone is rising, for some reason, I think of um, you know the weather girls where they're like da 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 da. da. I don't know why that just always comes into my brain. So. <laughs> um so yeah so the progesterone is rising and then with that progesterone is kind of like um i think because i have not had children and i honestly haven't read any books about children i've just probably read bits in like um you know cycle books where they talk about pregnancy again if you're pregnant you can also use the moon to track um but going back to the pregnancy bit i believe the third trimester is when progesterone is very high uh, I haven't looked this up before filming this video. It's just a thought I've just had, but I believe that the progesterone is higher. And I think that's why people get that like nesting feeling, you know, like the urge to nest in like the um, the last, the, the, the third trimester or the three trimesters. I think there's three. <laughs> um so yeah so um so also you will find that as well so i well maybe you will find that so i find that in uh luteal phase yeah the urge to like nest the urge to nest is strong in in this one the urge to nest is strong um and that is the that is the progesterone kicking in that's that kind of that um you know you can kind of you want to sleep a little bit more you want to have a little bit more rest you kind of want to you want to slow your roll a little bit here myself and julia my cousin spoke on the podcast on our podcast free flow about kind of slowing your roll um and you know how to how to do that so if you want to learn a bit more about how to do it um then check out the podcast um and i will go back to actually focusing my brain now so yeah so so that's what's happening with the hormones um I'm gonna also just sorry i'm just gonna actually just remove my nail polish because it's really annoying me and i was like i'll just remove my nail polish during this one um because i kind of know i know this season very well because we have had <laughs> we've had our ups and downs me and me and uh in autumn so uh yeah so your energy or your mood in this in this kind of phase and again i keep saying your mood obviously it might not be but remember big red rule your own experience trumps everything else you might be like sosh I'm the most optimistic, bubbly human being ever in my luteal phase. And I'll be like, that's awesome. I'll wait till you're mid twenties. No, um, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe you are. That's cool. Um, but for me, it tends to be a very introspective time in my cycle. Um, really nice time, like uh, ovulation, ov ovulatory phase. I do not want to sit in journal. I like might do a few bullet points and that's about it. <laughs> 
whereas luteal phase i'm like i could just write pages and pages you know of my feelings um and so yeah it's definitely a more re um, reflective and retrospective and introspective <laughs> time time for me um and um i think again that kind of you know it kind of drops into the whole sort of slowing your roll like i just want to th those are the t that's the time in my cycle when i am able to slowly because my sleep i, I really struggle with with procrastination in sleep but over to over time i am learning that like this is when the progesterone the progesterone is kind of kicking in like that's my body like it wants an early night so like let's honor that and give it the early night um so it's kind of things like that that are help are helping me and i think that also helps with my adhd symptoms and you know just general like well-being and mental health um you know goodness so um the energy here is is falling um i'll do my little what's the time mr wolf but yeah, the energy here, a bit like, as I say, just like the moon is uh, waning, your energy is, is falling here. Um, and it's really important, I think, to, you know, to uh, kind of renegotiate with yourself, you know, what you can, what you can actually um, achieve, do, fit into a day. Again, especially, obviously, I'm speaking from, you know, an ADHD perspective. Um, but I think it's really, really easy to, um, yeah, kind of, you know, get bogged down in, in all of the things that we should be able to do. And actually, you know, there is, there is a finite amount of time in a day. And there is also a finite amount of energy. And you know, those things are going to be a little bit different depending on the out, the outer season um, uh, and the inner season of your cycle. I think that, um, you know, when it's, you know, winter time and you're kind of in luteal phase and over here in the UK, it gets really dark really early. Like it's kind of hard to like want to have like, you know, do loads and loads of things after work, for example, in the evening, you know, in the week, in the weekdays and things. So it's really just, I think it's really helping me with the cycle practice, really helping me to like honor my limitations and respect that because when I don't do that, I crash and burn hard and it's and it's horrible and it takes me like years to recover um you know this is uh, the youtube uh, video uh, the youtube channel is a good example of that i was posting videos probably like seven years ago and this was before i was diagnosed with adhd and you know now i'm back and i'm you know trying to be kind of realistic about what i can do but i know i'm still kind of pushing myself with what i can really do so i'm really using my cycle to focus and create and 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 yeah, and just and, and, and create my business with my cycle so that it's sustainable. So um, <laughs> words I have for this phase of the cycle are descriptive words. My three descriptive words, because, you know, I love my three descriptive words are um, fierce, fierce, uh, Sasha, fierce, fierce, um, wild oh, yeah. and honest. Oh, I know, right? Dun, dun, dun. Um, but I think that throw that on the floor I'll pick that up later um but i think that that is i just love this sorry this is a vitamin e and coconut scented so they don't stink i one thing i really struggle with in luteal phase and i'm not in it at the moment but like i just really don't like certain smells um and light um and this is this is just it's really nice anyway so um sorry so yeah so fierce wild and honest and you know one of the ways that we can be really radically honest with ourselves is with that inner critic that kind of the for me that was a lot of imposter syndrome kind of you know rearing its ugly head and the struggle with the inner critic i am doing a whole other video on the inner critic so i'm not going to go down that rabbit hole today because um i'm already in a mode where i could probably just talk or oh, talk and oh, that does not feel good talk way too much um and not really say you know say very little um so <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I think that the, but I think the, the good side of the honesty that we can get in luteal phase is that you, I think that the rose tinted glasses come off that we've maybe had in like um, follicular phase and ovulatory phase. I think the rose tinted glasses come off and you see the BS and you know what? I don't, that's not a bad thing. That's really, that's not a bad thing. I think it's a bit like if, again, I think towards the end of the, in a summer video, I was talking, the ovulatory video, I was talking about um, phases of our lives and, this, and the menstrual cycle. And if we want to take, you know, a phase of the life as uh, 40s, 50s perimenopause, um, we can that, you know, that we could we could argue that's what the luteal phase of life. Um, and it's kind of that um, 
really seeing things for what they actually are. I think because of life experience, because of the way, again, h hormones are kind of playing out, hormone changes playing out. And then, you know, you get to, and this is just obviously from conversations I've had with people, but then you kind of get to uh, the men, uh, the you get to uh, menopause and getting through the menopause. And then you kind of have almost that energy of, uh, or a part of the energy of like the menstrual phase of the cycle where you just like, you just don't, you're just not so bothered. It's not that you don't really care, but it's like, I feel like inner, inner autumn is kind of that like, I don't care and I'm angry about it and rah, rah, rah. Whereas menstrual, the menstrual, like the maybe postmenopausal and like menstrual phase are kind of like, I don't actually have the energy to care about this thing, you know? Um, and maybe, I mean, obviously I, that's, that's speaking from, from conversations I'm recalling with people, uh, who have been through the menstrual phase and having those conversations, uh, been through the menopause and having those conversations but i'm not saying that like for the whole of the menopause and after that you do you, you just won't you don't have the energy to care but i think you maybe by that point rather than not having the energy to care and i'm sure there's maybe, maybe there's a bit of that depending on you know where you are with your health etc but i think it's probably more that you have the discernment and life experience to not care about things that that you maybe would have cared about like in your 20s and 30s because you're like actually that's just it's just not worth me being upset about that and I think that's I, I guess I mentioned that here because I think the rejection sensitivity disorder 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 with uh, ADHD it can co often compared that can really kind of heighten in a luteal phase so um yeah I think some of those concepts are like <laughs> there's a lot of meat in those and I'm, I don't want to do them a disservice by like kind of trying to go down that rabbit hole too much today but you know luteal phase it just comes up with like it's it's i think it can be you know really really challenging phase in the cycle it's probably been my most challenging phase because of my inner critic but i also think when we learn to saunter with the inner critic um that we can um not rein it in because it's it's this wild thing i don't think we can rein it in but i think if we learn to sometimes learn to be like you know hush and go back in your box like if it pops out during like follicular phase we need to be like nope you go, you go away until luteal phase because you're not actually going to serve me here but I think when we when we listen to that and we are able to be more discerning there is so much power that can come through because we have that sense of that sense of kind of that agency of like taking control maybe maybe taking our power back maybe coming back to what's actually important like what what is actually important for you like what qualities do you want to embody what is the kind of person you want to be where do you want to be spending your time if you're getting annoyed that you're like you've got all of these energy leaks that's not necessarily a bad thing that's just kind of a good it's a good mirror to be like hey this is actually this is actually what's happening um the rose tinted glasses are off like this is how you're spending your time or maybe you're like i don't know you're annoyed because you've not um uh hit a personal best in the gym or you've not like lost this weight to you know in this amount of time or you've not um i don't know you've not hit this work goal or you've not i don't know you've got a messy house you know all of these things are like things that i do have on a regular <laughs> basis um and i think that kind of you know you're able to kind of look around and be like well actually if I've just been like mindlessly scrolling on my phone for X amount of time, you know, most evenings to wind down, or I've been doing this thing or that thing, or, you know, actually I worked my butt off in the gym, but actually then I ate like five hot cross buns, you know, I don't know why five, they come in packs of four anyway, but like, you know, then, then, then actually you're kind of able to see, oh yeah, well, of course, of course I'm not. And rather than being harsh to ourselves on that, can we use that discernment, that honesty and be like, okay, look, like, I'm going to be honest with you. This doesn't feel good. I don't want to keep feeling this way let's let's be pragmatic about it how can we kind of organize ourselves and take the next steps to you know fulfill those goals so that was a bit of a tangent about around the honesty factor but i think that yeah it's important to yeah it's kind of important to kind of bring bring that in so <laughs> with that said um yeah fierce wild and, and honest i do get this like yeah i guess i kind of find that yeah where maybe with like the movement that i take i just feel more like I just feel more the the long the longer I learn about this phase, the more I kind of fall in love with it a bit when it comes back around. I think I kind of feel like it was such a struggle phase for me for so long, and now I'm like really learning to embrace it. And there's just some qualities there where it's like you know what's going to really serve serve me and what's going to serve the people that I care about and 
and um, and who am I becoming? And there's, I don't know, there's just something, there's something really special about this this phase. I think we can get, it can get overlooked because we're kind of too busy thinking like, ah, PMS, I'm due on, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm getting annoyed about it because the, the world doesn't, you know, the world is not cyclical. It's very linear and it's extremely frustrating for some of us. Um, organize is the um is the kind of the strength that i've put here um i would say organize i i've done this on my little cheat sheet i would say maybe actually organize maybe edit like they can obviously be kind of intertwined but i think yeah organizing your priorities editing your priorities i think sometimes editing we have to take away um and actually you know i think i, I don't um, this is obviously my experience because um, i'm sure a big part of it is with the adhd of like how much stuff i can actually fit in a day but i think that yeah when we it's a bit like you know creating a nicer a nicer home a nicer space i think a lot of that is to do with like um editing i think it's taking stuff it's taking stuff away i know caroline winkler was talking about this on her channel the other day um this will be going out like next week but um she today's like the 21st and i think i saw, saw her video yesterday in the bath and um she was talking about hello from uh, future Sorsha. <laughs> i'm just editing this video um which i've been trying to do now for about a month because it's the 12th of may now and i meant for this to go out like at least three weeks ago um also i have like i had my I've, i'm doing a, a vlog as well but my brows and my uh tan and stuff are all just like in the in the middle of developing so apologies that i just look a bit hectic um so like sheets of paper just keep flying because i've just got all my windows open because it's really warm but what, what i wanted to just do was um i nearly made this a part two video and then i was like you know what? i just i just need this video to be done um and actually it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't need to have a part two to it so where i was going with the caroline winkler um video was that um she her channel is um Lot, it's lots of different things it's like life stuff but also like our interior design and she was talking about you know the power of i think like being able to just take take away something to make it a bit stronger um and i think it's also like was it coco chanel that was like you know when you get dressed and then look in the mirror and then take off one thing and then go um so that basically my point was <laughs> there is power in um discernment and learning to not necessarily minimize but like there's power in just like taking something away just as if as, as there's like power in having you know a blank space um or you know like in photography when it's like the, the three thirds rule but there's also like i don't know there's something like calming about having like i don't know a thumbnail where there's like negative space for example so um yeah i think that's where i was going with that thought was that um you know luteal phase is a really great time to like simplify which isn't necessarily easy but it's using that honesty and that discernment that is very ripe in this season to um take away just lighten the load slow the roll a little bit like kind of be like what do i actually need to be doing here like for, actually it's a really good example with this video like i'm actually in ovulation phase right now but i was like if i if i make this a part two it doesn't really need to be a part two and also like do i can i just simplify it for myself just to get the thing done like sometimes done is better than perfect pretty much all the time done is better than perfect um so i'd rather just come at you like <laughs> from my sunday morning all the sheets are off because they're in the laundry the windows are open uh everything is just <laughs> my face is just being anyway whatever so anyway um yeah there's the power of just yeah taking away and simplifying okay and then the last couple of bits um i think that i had were the foods and the movement so um i've got on my little cheat sheet dark leafy greens sweet potato cacao berries i meant to have cacao this morning i might have to have some cacao in a minute sometimes in ovulate ovulatory phase i like to just have a moment and just have some cacao because i feel like i have all of this high like this energy as i spoke about in the last video and sometimes i just like <laughs> need a moment i have gone out for a nice walk this morning so that helped um 
if I if I actually do end up putting the vlog up then you'll see you'll see that with my crazy <laughs> anyway um but yeah dark leafy greens is supposed to be really good I tend to one of my biggest hacks for this is and I obviously I say this every video but like I'm not a nutritionist there are people that will make really beautiful recipes or probably simple recipes and you could go and find them uh they do definitely exist but um one of my biggest hacks is to throw in a handful of either kale or spinach into a smoothie because you just can't taste it especially the spinach so i just throw a handful of spinach into my um into my uh what do you call it into my protein powder uh in the blender <clears throat> that's great it just means i know at least every day i'm getting some spinach um and i also just really love um kale with like a little bit of oil rubbed in and some seasoning and you just pop it in the oven for like like a couple of minutes it doesn't need very long it's like crispy kale bites that's really nice as well if you want like a bit of crunch but you're trying not to have like crisps um it kind of reminds me of those veggie crisps you know the, the parsnip beetroot yummy ones so good save the sweet potato actually you could just chop that up and have it in little slices um and you can put some seasoning on it you can do like some cinnamon on it if you kind of want like a warm sort of sweet pudding dessert vibe um, or you can go you know some garlic and mix herbs and things that's my favorite but it is it is nice with a bit of cinnamon um cacao i just love cacao maybe one day i think it'd be really nice to do like a little mini maybe not an actual cacao ceremony um on my youtube but maybe just like a little a little like cacao and journal sesh that would be that might be really nice just to like have a little pause i'd love to be doing some more like journaling sessions and things with you guys on here i just think it'd be really nice there are a few kind of updates coming to my youtube channel because i was thinking about having a separate vlog channel and then i was like you know what it's kind of hard enough to post consistently as it is on here <laughs> let alone adding another another channel into the mix so i think i'm just going to be doing some more vlogs and things on this channel um yeah um and then you can get to know me in a bit of a different way i mean i'm already kind of moving out of just teaching yoga on here obviously with these videos so i feel like the people that have subscribed from years back are yeah maybe they're unsubscribing <laughs> if i'm not doing much yoga but i will be bringing some yoga into this but um yeah i just want it to be like i want it to be i want it to be fun i want to be enjoying doing these videos um so i like to have a mixture and that's okay and then lastly i've got berries <laughs> i guess berries are nice and low sugar um i think i will say that like i don't think it's a good idea to like have a really sweet smoothie first thing in the morning i feel like a lot of people and maybe i'm just seeing this because i've been doing some um just being a bit better with my eating habits recently and trying to just shift a bit of weight that I gained but a lot of people are like yeah I just have like you know pineapple and mango and then like some you know I don't know some and then some spinach and then I don't know they put, like, kind of list a bunch of other stuff off and I'm a bit like well surely you're just gonna crash because it's still it's still sugar so I think berries are great because you know just kind of, they're kind of low on the is it the glycemic index I think they're low on the glycemic index so um, anyway, but the luteal phase, we want to be eating, well, you could try to eat kind of little and often, um, if you find that your energy levels are dipping a lot. I think we want to keep the, 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 the blood sugar spikes from, from spiking basically. So I think if you eat every few hours, which I tend to do on a work day because I have breaks or I'll have snacks in those breaks. Um, so I'll give you an example of a luteal phase. Maybe this would be a good vlog as well, actually, but a luteal phase week for me might be when I'm working, might be, um, I will have my breakfast. I've been really enjoying overnight oats recently from M&S, which is just around the corner from me. They're high protein ones. Um, to be honest, you can make these yourself. I've just been, um, I've just been very much like in just been kind of doing lots so I've been I think when I when I'm when I get quite busy kind of food is the first thing that can drop to the wayside unless I'm kind of buying bits so um anyway but you can you can make your own version of that I've actually got some um high protein yogurt and some high protein granola so I'm going to bring that to my boyfriend's house this week and um have that in the mornings just because I also don't like using single plastic all the time and I have been using it quite a bit like um for April so 
just want to get out of that habit um but if you get overwhelmed and you need to do that that's fine like i'd rather eat better food like healthier food and do that than um just eat junk which isn't inevitably what i would do because i would just panic and eat sugary cereal or whatever um so yeah you could have some overnight oats and then um i really like to then if i've gone to the gym in the morning i will also then have my uh protein powder with some uh unsweetened almond milk and um some a handful of frozen spinach and then i'll do my work for a couple of hours and then i'll have my break so then i'll have um probably like a grenade protein bar at that point and then i will back, be back at work at my desk and then i'll have a lunch break so i'll have like i don't know i kind of it kind of varies often i'll have something along the lines of some salmon or sea bass with some rice and some veggies um or sometimes i'll have that more often i actually have that as breakfast most days i've just been kind of having a phase where i've been enjoying like a cold breakfast i think because i've been taking that and going for like a walk in the morning um or i've been going to the gym in the morning and then having that uh before i go so i've had a bit of energy so yeah um just so it's not too heavy because having like yeah the salmon and stuff is a bit heavy in the morning um if i'm going to then work out afterwards so and then in the evening i will have um i've actually been really enjoying wraps at the moment so i make myself a wrap of some chicken barbecue chicken and some leafy greens and some cucumber um and then i'll have yeah i'll have that so that's been really enjoyable and then i've got protein yogurt um my second snack of the day as well i've been having my second snack sometimes some olives um, and sometimes just some protein yogurt with a bit of uh, raspberries. Um, yeah, that's been quite good actually. I've been I've been feeling pretty good on that. So it's also just been quite a warm couple of weeks. So I think that kind of affects what I want to eat. Um, definitely more prone to having like soups, lentils with rice, and lots of fish with rice um, in sort of when it's not when it's not nice weather. So. Um, yeah so i hope that helps and then lastly for luteal phase i've got yoga for hips hiking strength training dance i really love some dance like some belly dance in my room mm, with my headphones on oh yeah really good really recently i've been listening to is it tiger who's got that song water do 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 that one i like that one and i also quite like a doja cat's woman that's quite a good like hip wiggler um in fact i've got i might i might i need to update my spotify with these but i have a spotify playlist for each season so you could give that a listen i think actually at the moment a lot of them might be more like uh teen angsty like you may wish uh you know what is that song is it worth it can you even hear me standing with your spotlight on me no. yeah that song um that's definitely on it i'm sure but anyway so um yeah i kind of have like half of me can be a bit like this kind of like teen teen kind of i think it's because it's such an introspective retrospective nostalgic vibe sometimes with luteal vase um not nostalgic actually i probably find that more in the summer is more nostalgic like so, so, so summertime sadness um and a lot lot of del rey um but yeah i don't know there's something like teen angsty there especially if i'm like annoyed at the world or like stupid things are happening that are just making me really hate people <laughs> like that whole oh do you know what? i'm not even gonna do that down the route anyway um or i just love stuff where it's like making me like want to like wiggle my hips and like i don't know because i put a bit of weight and i'm a bit conscious of my belly and i'm like i'll just stand in the mirror and just do a little bit of belly dancing and i'm like oh, it's all good it's all good it's all good this isn't your it's, it's all good it's all good um love yourself love your love yourself um that's okay especially lose your face we have to remind ourselves of that um, rather than like punishment and grueling cardio and not eating enough calories and wondering why I feel like crap. Um, <laughs> excellent. Um, and then yeah, yoga for hips for me, my lower back and my hips get really tight. So um, and also my feet really hurt. So you know if you want a yoga for the feet, um, because I feel like that's yeah and a good foot massage because my feet just really ache sometimes and your feet are linked to the pelvic bone. And also, is it the heart and the throat? Yeah, I can't remember where I learned that. It was definitely in a womb, uh, some kind of womb yoga class. So I was like, oh, maybe that's why my feet ache. I don't know, but it's interesting. Uh, maybe, anyway, I've also got strength training. I probably don't go as heavy 
with the strength training i do do the strength training because i feel better for doing it but i maybe what i mean is when i don't go as heavy is that maybe like like this week i've been hitting some personal bests Booyah, and a bit of in the follicular phase as well and then actually i have been upping my calories um because i was literally eating like 1200 calories and be like Whoa, and i think i've just messed up not too much but i think i probably just messed up my metabolism um by just putting more stress and cortisol on my body because i was like i'll just do more cardio and then eat less calories like no but it's not the 80s anymore so <laughs> we know better now um so yeah i've just been like having like 1800 calories um most days and then like the other day i had 1500 but i meant to have a bit more but anyway but most of the time i've been doing that and then my strength training has been really good because i've not been getting lightheaded when i'm like lifting weights and i've been able to lift heavier so we love that and i've also been hitting more steps so i do have on here hiking <clears throat> but you could do i don't really have any to hike around here because i'm i'm in a very flat part of england um but uh you could i've just been going on lots of walks so i've just been upping my steps so i'm aiming for i was aiming for six thousand and i did that in april and then in may i've been aiming for eight thousand and then maybe we'll go to 10 in june um but that's quite good as i'm burning about 300 calories a day just doing that so um that's been really cool and then you know if i'm strength training as well there's the afterburn and doing a bit of yoga and things so um yeah so it all kind of adds up but i think if you are yeah if you're in a bit of a funk with me like with, with me with your weight um then uh especially in neutral phase um menstrual menstrual phase i will just have as a break and i will do try and get some steps in but i won't be as hard on myself days one to three if i if i can get you know maybe like three to five thousand steps in that's great just, be, just because i don't have a lot of energy and i just need to rest um and then the other days I, yeah, just doing my, doing more of my steps. Um, and it feels really good, especially luteal phase when, I can't remember where I read this, so I can't really solidify the, the accuracy of it, but I'm sure it was in one of the period books. And I think, I think in luteal phase, our bodies can burn up to an extra 300 calories a day. So if you're feeling more hungry, I know definitely the met metabolism changes because my ADHD meds are less effective in luteal phase. I actually am not at the moment because they've gone up so expensive, so I can't actually afford to take uh, my correct dose. But at the moment I'm taking my usual dose and then I would normally take um, a bit extra in luteal phase as per my uh, psychiatrist, you know, they know about that, so that's fine. So I'm not just saying just do it, just, you know, um, but at the moment I've been taking some pre-workout instead <laughs> because it gives, doesn't give me the jitters and it, um, yeah, it really helps with, um, having a bit of extra, like clear, clear energy. Um, yeah, so, uh, but that's, I mean, a lot of people have said, so normally what I would do is I'd have my normal dose and then a couple of hours later, because I do a long, I do like a 10 hour work day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday. So I have Thursdays and the weekend off. Um, so then normally a couple of hours later, I would take um, a little low dose as well, just to like get me through the, the rest of the day. Um, instead I've been doing, in fact, you know what, I'll do, a, I'll do a separate video on like how to wait suggestions to manage your ADHD, either un unmedicated or with a lower dose of medication. Cause I know the shortages are affecting more than just me. I know it's like a global thing. Um, so I won't go down that rabbit hole now, but anyway, <clears throat> what I'm saying is be kind to your body especially in luteal phase because inner critic can come up and be really 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 vicious especially if you get bloating you know um, i just had a really difficult uh late luteal and menstrual phase literally the last week it was really 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 difficult it was not uh i was just really incredibly bloated like an inch and a half around my waist <clears throat> bloated and uh i just really not in a good headspace so um yes so i'm speaking from a lot of experience with that and uh i'll maybe touch upon that in another video as well but i wanted to just finish off this video it's going to be a long one because this is 17 minutes and i've already done like 22 so i'm going to end it here thank you very much for joining me on this video i hope it was fruitful luteal phase is just there's just so much to you know to go into with this phase so if there's any of these topics that you want me to explore deeper in a separate video let me know and i will see you folks in my next video okay bye